Estimates suggest that the world will have to produce 70% more food for humans by 2050 to cater for the predicted 9 billion people. This against a backdrop of diminishing agricultural land, climate change, and depletion of marine food sources such as fish stock. To produce more meat also means that more animal feed will be required. For both food and feed, we need to find alternative protein sources. Researchers at the CSIR believe that the age-old food source of insects may hold the answer, not only to a new source of protein and oils, but may also create new jobs in rural South Africa. Insects are in effect a natural diet for so many species. They are a natural diet for fish. They are a natural diet you know, for birds, for poultry, chicken, and for humans too. Globally, over 2 billion people actually supplement their diet you know, with insects. And in Africa alone, there's over 250 species of insects you know, that are edible. We're talking about your locusts, termites, Mopani worms, you know, that are very popular in South Africa, beetles and various types, you know, of worms. We have neglected this available, renewable food and feed resource for a very, very long time. And our understanding, you know, of biology has actually helped us, you know, to figure out ways to industrialize, you know, insects, put them up um, in factories, you know, and there is potential that one could employ a lot of people uh, in various businesses, you know, that would process insects into various products and services that could actually serve humanity. In a two-year project funded by USAID, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform, CSIR researchers have proven the viability of using mealworms that feed on agricultural waste products with low nutritional value as a high value protein suitable specifically for poultry and fish feed. The pilot study found that mealworms can be mass reared on crop waste such as sorghum waste, hardly need water, reproduce very quickly, and their food conversion ratio is higher than that of cows and chicken. The study suggests that the scaling up of mealworm production to industrial production is relatively simple and viable. Fish and poultry feeding trials conducted in this project have indicated that the mealworm insect is a suitable protein ingredient for fish feed and in whole form is popular with chicken as well as fish such as catfish and tilapia. Mass rearing insects in industry could potentially create a lot of employment and a lot of business entities that are interlinked. You know, can you imagine a chain of businesses that would start off with businesses that are rare insects, businesses that process insects into various products, including feed and food, businesses, you know, that would breed fish, businesses that would farm fish, and businesses that would process fish. And there are so many businesses, you know, down the line that one could think of. The research has shown that uh, insects can actually be a very valuable feedstock for so many industries, including cosmetic industries and pharmaceutical industries. The trials that were set up in communities in Limpopo, Mpumalanga and Gauteng, with the help of project collaborator, the University of Limpopo, not only proved the technical viability of rearing mealworms and its suitability in feed for chicken and fish, but also confirm the suitability of such industries in rural settings. What has been so unique about this project is that communities that the CSR has been working with on this project across Limpopo, Mpumalanga and Houten have been a part of this project you know, from the way to go. This makes it very easy you know, to transfer skills, to transfer technology and to exchange learning outcomes. We learned a lot from working with these communities. And one thing that came out strongly is that a lot of these impoverished communities actually have answers you know, to their own problems. They have got answers as to how they would want the issue of unemployment in rural areas you know, addressed. And going forward with this project, these communities are going to be a vital you know, component of the intended establishment of regional aquaculture hubs that have got so many business entities. In the process, 
They will provide you know, the labor that is required you know, for this regional aquaculture hub. They will provide the management you know, that is required you know, for, for, for these hubs. They will provide a lot of indigenous knowledge systems you know, that is required to sustain you know, these businesses. And from a sustainable point of view, you know, and from the CSRS point of view, we really think you know, that this project is in very good hands because these communities you know, are very familiar with the project. You know, they play their role you know, in its formative um, you know, stages and they play their role in implementing many parts you know, of the project. What future can the youth and the elderly have in this harsh village like Dikhal? Sometimes I think of Dikhal as the land God gave to Cain. Do not talk about youth unemployment like it is a disease. I would rather you refer it as youth unemployability. If we were employable, what exactly is it that we would not be able to do? Every poor community in South Africa is rich in one key resource. This forgotten resource is called the human resource. And we have plenty of it here.